Martha and Ash decide to move to the country house. Ash can't imagine his life without social media, devoting all his free time to it. Shortly after moving in, the guy dies. Martha learns about the existence of a special service that allows grief-stricken relatives to stay in contact with deceased people. Initially, the girl reacts to this idea with great indignation, but a little later she becomes interested. Hello everyone, this is Director of Hollywood. Today I'm going to tell you about the movie Be Right Back. You have sexual responses. I mean... This works. Oh. That I can turn on and off pretty much instantly. Ash and Martha, a young couple, move from the bustling city to a secluded house in the countryside. Ash spends a lot of time on social media, while Martha prefers real life. The day after the move, Ash plans to return the rented van and Martha can't go with him because of work. She works on the project all day and only notices by evening that Ash has not contacted her. Martha calls the company where they rented the van and finds out that the car hasn't returned yet. Martha becomes worried and calls her sister to share the news, but at that moment the police arrive at the house. Martha realizes that something terrible has happened Ash has been killed in a car accident. At the funeral, Martha's friend tells her about a new online service that allows her to communicate with dead people. The service uses data from social media profiles and can create an exact copy of the deceased Ash. Martha is not thrilled with the idea and becomes enraged, rejecting her friend's offer. Later, when Martha checks her email, she sees a message from Ash. Enraged, she calls Sarah and accuses her friend, but she convinces her to try the service before giving it up for good. Martha spends a few days grieving, and when she learns that she is pregnant, she decides to respond to Ash's message. They begin chatting, and Martha uploads photos and videos of Ash to the service's database so she can hear his voice and talk to him on the phone. The artificial Ash's speech and humor, as well as his communication style, are completely consistent with the way the real Ash would communicate. Martha begins to believe that she is really communicating with her late lover. She spends the entire next week virtually uninterrupted in her conversations with the artificial Ash. At a doctor's visit, Martha hears the heartbeat of her unborn child and records it to share this happy news with Ash. But when she accidentally dropped her phone on her way out of the hospital, she became hysterical, thinking she had lost touch with her beloved forever. While buying a new phone, Martha receives an incoming call from Ash who informs her that he is still available because his data is in the cloud. He also offers her an experimental service that is very expensive. Martha can order a synthetic human body, created from artificial flesh, into which a program can be downloaded. A short time later, couriers deliver an unusual package to her. Martha opens the box and shudders to see a body in the fetal position that doesn't look like Ash. The virtual Ash calms the girl down and explains that to get the physical characteristics of the dead guy, the body must be immersed in water and given time to synchronize with the database. Martha fills the tub with water and leaves the body there, following Ash's instructions, while she goes into another room. Later, hearing some noise, the girl leaves the room and meets Ash at the bathroom door. He is naked and wet, and asks Martha for a towel but she stands there in shock, looking at him long and intently. After a while, Martha and the android Ash sit on different sides of the couch, as the girl is not yet ready to approach him, although Ash assures her that he does not bite. After drinking, Martha becomes more liberated and asks Ash questions about his genitals, after which they move into the bedroom and have sex. Since the android has been in the house, however, Martha feels uncomfortable in his presence and cannot get used to his existence. She is annoyed by the android's artificial breathing, as well as his flawless obedience to all her requests without any questions. In addition, he shows no emotion unless Martha asks for it. The android does not possess the habits and personality traits that the real Ash possessed, as this information was not put into his database. Enraged, Martha throws Android Ash out of the house, but the next morning she finds him by the hedge, as he cannot go further than 25 meters from the activation point. Realizing that she no longer wants to live with the android, Martha takes him to a high cliff and orders him to jump. Although Ash agrees, this only irritates the girl even more, as her true lover would never take such a step. 
the android then begs Martha to keep him alive and says he doesn't want to die. Several years later, Martha is still living with her daughter in the country house. It's the girl's birthday, and she asks permission to take a piece of cake to the android, who, meanwhile, is huddled in the attic. Normally, Martha only lets her see the android on weekends, but this time she makes an exception. Once up in the attic, Martha's daughter sweetly chats with Android Ash and confesses that both pieces of cake are actually for her, since he doesn't need to eat. Ash congratulates the birthday girl and praises her for her craftiness. At this time, Martha is standing by the stairs and hesitates to go up because she is feeling strong emotions. When she calms down, she goes up to the attic to join them. That's all for today. Subscribe and like it if you want more videos like this.